Hello guys, hope you are all doing well. At the beginning, I want to introduce what are the features we will implement and the skills we will practice throughout this tutorial. We will learn how to create a dynamic get of type get item and filter it with one of the query string parameters of the URL. We will create the recipe item side view and link it to the recipe side view such that the read link of each recipe loads the recipe full page. Then we will add the recipe item view to the component and learn how to customize the recipe model and view to display the ingredients JSON string as an HTML list element. At last, we will enable the create and edit recipe side view and add more permissions to allow registered users to create and edit recipes at front end. This tutorial may be a little bit more complex than the previous parts. Please watch the previous parts at first if you find it difficult to continue. Well, I am so excited to get it done. So, load your JCB development website and let's start instantly. Let's create a dynamic get as we did before in the previous video. This time it will be get item, not get list query, because we want to retrieve only one recipe record specified by its ID value. It is based on the recipe backend view as well. As you can see, reusability is maintained. <laughs> You know now it is a good practice to remove irrelevant columns from the selection list. It is the first time to use filters over these tutorials. The filters are very useful to filter the retrieved records according to state values or request variables. In our example, we will use the ID filter to get only one recipe record defined by the ID parameter of the read URL. You can see it highlighted in the recipe side view template. As usual, make sure that the recipe record is published using where conditions. Again, we need to join the categories table to display the category title. Just to make it more clear, the prefix letter B is the categories table alias, which is defined in the as select. You can select whatever alias you like, just make sure they are not repeated.
the ingredients filled will need special handling because it is saved as JSON string so it is a little bit complex we will see later in this video how to display save and close to proceed to the next step go to the side views manager to create our recipe item side view It is very important to use a site name, I mean name in good, different from the single record name of the recipe admin view, to avoid confusion when enabling site edit form of recipe admin view. The confusion is due to that GCB uses the single record name as the edit or form view name. Therefore, when you use the same name for both views, it loads the recipe side view as if it is loading the edit form view, which is not the needed behavior. Let's select the recipe dynamic git we have just created. I have prepared some code to copy and paste quickly in order to keep the video as short as possible. I will leave this page link in the description below if you need it. I didn't have enough time to find a nice looking template for the recipe view. I am not front-end developer anyway, so please forgive me. Go ahead and replace the static HTML code with the corresponding dynamic get values. It is good practice to use translatable language strings wherever you can. I will output the ingredients value using the var dump function to find out how our dynamic get handled it. Save and close to proceed to the next step. Now edit the recipe side view to modify the recipe details link. Change the view name to recipe item. Well, save and close. We are ready to add the recipe side view to the component side views. Let's add the recipe side view. Enable public access and add access for both views. Just to be prepared when we add more view permissions later in this video. Save and close to compile the component. We have only one side view up to now.
install the component to update it. As you can see, the recipe item view is there. Make sure both side views are accessible for public users. Now, go to the front end and test the recipe item side view. Great, it is working as expected, and the ingredients structure is displayed as you can see. The dynamic get detected that the ingredients is JSON string and converted it into multidimensional associative array. It has only ingredient IDs and quantity. So we need to get the unit and the name for each ingredient of this array. I know this will be a little bit complex for beginners, but it is a good exercise to know to what extent GCB generated code is customizable in many areas. Well, Let's write some BHP code to customize recipe dynamic get and side view in order to show the ingredients list such that each list item has ingredient name, unit, and quantity. There may be multiple approaches to implement this requirement. I choose to do all the work in the recipe item model as you will see shortly. Go to recipe dynamic get Custom scripts tab, enable add BHB after getting the item, and insert this line of code. What is this for? Well, let's open the recipe item model class to show what we are going to do. The model class uses the get item method to retrieve the recipe record we ask it for and returns it as a property of the model object. Here I will add an ingredients list property to the item after getting it. This new property will get its value from the new method get ingredients list. I will add shortly to the model class. Let's compile and update the component to see it working in the recipe item model class. Great! Here is a new added line and the above comment tells you from where this code is generated. Well, where can I add new methods to the recipe item model class? Here is the trick. Go to the recipe item side view. 
the custom buttons tab enable add custom buttons we will not add custom buttons but this is required to show the code sections where we can add new methods to the controller and model classes related to this side view let's add the get ingredients list method to the model This method receives the ingredients array as a parameter. And does it work to return the ingredients list associative array where each array element is another array of ingredient ID, name, and unit? and the key is the ingredient ID well save and compile the component again Here are the new method is added to the model class as expected. Nice. As we have this new ingredients list property now, we can use it combined with the original ingredients array to show the ingredients HTML list as required let me show you the structure of the new array as well before we write further code Okay, here it is. Let's write another PHP snippet in the side view template to implement this requirement. We will use the unit array again, as we did in part 2, in order to display the translated name of the unit. Don't worry, I will leave the link of these code snippets in the description below. Okay, compile and update the component to test the result of our customization. Oh, something wrong there. Let me check. Yes, it is the quantity array key is misspelled. Let's fix it.
Okay, it should work now. Great, it works, but it still needs more to do. The unit name is not translated. Why? Do you remember that we added the unit field to only the ingredient back end view? Well, the unit name is translated correctly at the back end. Why it is not translated at front end as well? This is because we don't have the ingredient edit form enabled at front end. So let's enable it and see the result. Go to admin views of the recipe manager component. And select add to enable the edit create side view of the ingredient admin view. Compile and update the component. Refresh. Okay, it is working as expected. I think this may be a limitation in JCB. Can you find another workaround to fix this issue? You can take it as an exercise if you like. To make the recipe manager interactive, let's try to allow registered users to create and edit recipes. In order to secure the creation and editing of recipes, let's add more permissions to the recipe admin view to provide the site admin more control and flexibility to configure the recipe form access according to different user groups. Go to the recipe admin view, settings tab. In the permissions section, add the different view actions as you can see. Notice that the implementation can be applied to the record level or to the whole view level or to both levels. Select both levels to provide the site admin more flexibility and access. At the end, it depends on the requirement analysis of your component, of course. Compile and update the component to check the new permissions. Go to the recipe manager dashboard and click options to check the permissions. Configure the new permissions such that the registered users can create and edit recipes. Nice! Let's add the edit recipe link to the recipe item side view. Before that, we need to make sure the front end user has access to the recipe site edit view to show the edit link. This check can be implemented in the recipe dynamic get, which is the recipe model as you know. 
Copy and paste this code snippet into the after get item section, as you can see. This code snippet uses JCB generated helper method to check the current user access level and determine whether he can edit the recipe record. If yes, then show the edit link, otherwise don't show it. Now we can check whether the edit link exists, then display the edit link anchor element directly below the recipe name. Go to the component admin views to enable the create and edit side view of the recipe admin view. Select add plus menu to allow creating menu items of type create recipe. Well, let's update the component and check the result. Great! The create recipe menu item type is there. Let's create a menu item to allow registered users to create their own recipes. For this demonstration, I created the login and logout menu items and logged in as site administrator. As you can see, the create recipe menu item is there and working. Let's try and edit an existing recipe. Here is the edit recipe link is displayed. Click it. Let's change the preparation time and save. Nice, it works and the new preparation time value is saved. I think this is enough for now. It was a little bit heavy session, wasn't it? You can test the create recipe form from your side after completing this part. Also, a JCB package of this version will be available to download and import into your site to play with it if you find it helpful. In the next video, we'll add some more enhancements, mainly some filters to recipes side view and more access control fine tuning. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will make sure to answer them as much as I can. Like the video if you find it helpful and subscribe to be notified when the next video is published. See you in the next video.